Hello Year 6 and welcome to today's geography lesson. Today we are going to be learning all about Richmond Park, which is this beautiful park in South West London. Here we see some pictures of it. We can see deer, beautiful lakes, ponds, trees and forests. And hopefully one day you can visit this park and you'll know all about it. Right, let's start off with this quiz. Please get a pen and paper and write down your answers, pausing after each question. Question number one, which coordinates come first when reading grid references? It doesn't matter whether we're reading four figure or six figure grid references. One of these always comes first. Is it the Eastings or the Northings? The Eastings is the X axis and the Northings is the Y axis. Question two, which of these two are examples of human, so man-made features on an ordnance survey map. Golf course, forest, post office or hills. Which of these two are man-made? Question three, what is this OS symbol stand for? This I, what does that symbol stand for in an, on an ordnance survey map? And question four, do carbon emissions increase or decrease when deforestation increases? So when deforestation increases, do carbon emissions increase or decrease? The more trees that are cut down, how does that affect carbon emissions? Question five, deforestation is partially caused by cattle farming. True or false? Pause this video now and write down your answer and choose the correct word. Deserts are usually humid, moist or dry. Pause this video before we go through the answers. OK, Eastings coordinates always come first before Northings. We go along the corridor and up the stairs. And we'll go through some more examples of these later in this lesson so you can embed your knowledge. Now, which of these two are examples of human man-made features on an OS map. Well, golf courses and post offices, because these don't occur naturally in the wild. And this I was a symbol for a tourist information center. And as deforestation increases, carbon emissions also increase because we are burning more wood, which increases carbon emissions. And also there are less trees to absorb the carbon dioxide. And deforestation is partially caused by cattle farming. This is true. And deserts are usually dry. If something is if air is humid or moist, there's a lot of moisture in the air. And that is not the case in deserts. OK, now let's have a look at a few pictures of Richmond Park, this beautiful park in the sun. What can we see here? We can see sun and trees. We can see beautiful gardens and we can see deer roaming free. OK, well, let me show you where Richmond Park is on a map in relation to the rest of London. So this is central London here. This river is called the Thames River running through London and north is up here. South is down here. This is east and that is west. So in relation to the centre of London, Richmond Park is south west. OK, and I've drawn a little path here of how long it would take you to walk to Richmond Park if you walked from Art Franklin Academy. It would take the average person two and a half hours to walk it. Well, you are more likely to get there through another mode of transport, probably public transport, which would not take you that long. OK, now let's have a closer look at a map of Richmond Park. And let's look at all the amazing things that there are here. So please, could you make a list of five human features, so man-made features, and two physical features in the park? Please pause this video now and write them down. Well, we can see plenty of human man-made features. We can see lots of gates. These are entrance areas. Bishop's Gate, 
Bulk Gate, Sheen Gate, Roehampton Gate, Robin Hood Gate, Kingston Gate, Ham Gate, and Petersham Gate. We can also see lots of public toilet facilities. So there's usually one at each gate. We can see P's, which stand for car park. We can also see cafes here. There's a little cafe sign there. There's another one here. And we can also see this fork and knife. What do we think that stands for? Well, that means restaurant. Can you spot the other restaurant on the map? Here it is. We can also see park cycle. This is a bicycle hire facility. So you can hire bikes and cycle around the park. OK, then we can also see some natural features. So we can see a wood here, this green wood here. We can see the, a pond here. Can you spot the other smaller pond in the park? Yes, it's right here. So there are some examples of man-made and physical features. We can also see some danger signs here where it's steep, where there's gravel, where there's a risk of falling, risk of fall here. Where's the other risk of fall? That's right, it's there. We can also see these wheelchair signs that show you that there's access for um, disabled access if you're in a wheelchair, which is also important information to sometimes know. Okay. And here we can see a key, which if we don't know what a symbol stands for, that tells us what it means. And we can see a do not cycle on grass sign, keep to designated cycle routes and roads. And why do we think they have that warning? Well, it's to make sure that cyclists don't run into pedestrians or even worse, into deer. And also, if you had everyone cycling on non-cycle paths, that would erode the beautiful grassland. Right, here are a few questions to test your grid reference knowledge from last week. Please get a pen and paper and write down your answers. I'll help you with the first few. What is the four figure grid reference of Sidmouth Wood? Step number one, we have to locate Sidmouth Wood. Can you find Sidmouth Wood somewhere on this map? So I'm looking for green greenery because I know it's a wood. Ah, there's greenery and there is Sidmouth Wood. The question is asking for four figure grid reference or a six figure grid reference. It's asking for a four figure grid reference. So the first thing we do is we go to the bottom left hand corner and we go down to the Eastings first and we hit 21. So those are our first two digits for our four figure grid reference, 21. And then we go back to this bottom left corner and we go left until we hit the northings, which is 18. So the answer is 21, 18. Please answer question two next. Now, question three says, what human man-made features can you find in 21, 16? Well, where is 21, 16? Let's start by going along the Eastings. 21 is here, so we know it's somewhere in this column. And 16, we know is here. So we're looking at this square here. This square is 2116. And the question is asking for man-made features. Well, what's man-made in this square? I can see a car park. I can see a cafe. And I can see a gate. These are all man-made. Right, please answer question four, which is asking for natural features, so not man-made. OK. Question five says, what is the six figure grid reference of Roehampton Gate? So let's find Roehampton Gate first. We're looking for a gate, so it's probably on the edge of the park. Roehampton Gate, Roehampton Gate, that's Robin Hood Gate, that's Richmond Gate. Here's Roehampton Gate. Now, is the question asking for a four figure grid reference or a six figure grid reference? It's asking for a six figure grid reference. So let's start off by going to the bottom left hand corner. Then we go down first and we hit 23. So we know we can write down 23. And then to give the last digit, we need to imagine there are 10 imaginary lines here. And if we were to draw an imaginary line going down, I would say that is 23, nine. So 
23.9 are the first three digits of our six-figure good reference, then we need to do the last three digits. So we would go then to the bottom left-hand corner and go left until we hit the northings. We hit 18. And we then have to imagine there are 10 imaginary lines going up here. And I would say that's not quite halfway. And it's a bit closer to halfway than it is to the bottom. So I would say that is 18.3 or 18.4. So the six-figure grid reference for Roehampton Gate would be 239184. Please complete the rest of these questions and pause this video now. OK, now. Next, we have some research questions for you. Please go onto this website here, the Richmond Park website, where you will find an amazing website with so much information about the park. And then please answer these questions. But before you answer them, let me take you on a little tour of this website. OK, so Richmond Park, here we see um, this is Escape to the Great Outdoors in Richmond Park with its wide open spaces, grasslands and deer herds just a stone's throw from central London. And it's got told us what the opening times are. We can look at a park map. There's a telephone number that we can call if we need to. And if we scroll down, we can explore, discover all that Richmond Park has to offer. It's got deer safety advice. It's got information about a golf course. It's got information about this cafe called Roehampton Cafe. It's got information about this beautiful plantation called Isabella Plantation. Pembroke Lodge, which appears to be a cafe or a restaurant. King Henry's Mound. Park cycle. So we saw earlier on the map that we can hire bicycles so we don't have to bring our bicycles there. And stag beetles. So let's have a look at deer safety in Richmond Park. It says, please keep at least 50 meters away from the deer. The deer in Richmond Park and Bushy Park are wild animals and can be unpredictable. 12 things you should know about the deer rutting season. Don't take risks with rutting deer. The Royal Parks warns visitors. So there's articles you can read here about the deer. There's safety advice for photographers, safety advice for dog walkers. So you can read about the deer here. Let's see what else we can read about. Let's find out more about the Isabella plantation. Wow, this is a beautiful plantation with hundreds of different species of flowers, azaleas, rhododendrons, and we can read about Located in the gardens are the national collection of the Wilson 50 azaleas, introduced to the West from Japan in the 1920s. Beautiful plantation. We can look here about monthly plant diaries if we wanted to read about different plants, how the camellias have been doing in March, magnolias, and we can read about these beautiful flowers. You might have seen these yellow flowers in the parks near you. They look similar to daffodils. And if we wanted to, we could also read about food and drink if we go to the park, because we might get hungry. Let's read about Pembroke Lodge. Wow, it's a beautiful lodge with beautiful flowers. It's a magnificent listed Georgian mansion set in 13 acres of landscaped grounds. Now, if we want to read about the history of Richmond Park, this website gives us lots of interesting information about it. Pembroke Lodge has hosted weddings for over 50 years. There's a car park. It tells you what the opening hours are. And if we wanted to read about refreshment points in the park, we can read about the different refreshment points. Now, let's have a look about things to see and do. If you go along this top part, you can read about the different things that you can see and do. So there's wildlife. There's not just deer, but there's loads of other wildlife that you can see in Richmond Park. There's birds, there's bats, fungi, grasses and wildflowers, invertebrates, so insects, mammals, stag beetles, and then most beautiful trees, old oak trees that can grow up to a thousand years old. 
Well, please have a bit of fun exploring this website while you answer the questions on this PowerPoint presentation here. So the questions are, what are the opening times of Richmond Park? What's the minimum distance visitors must keep from the deer? When was the Isabella plantation planted? What is King Henry's, why is King Henry's Mound significant? What are some sports you can do in Richmond Park? Where can you hire bikes in Richmond Park? And how many bays does the golf driving range have? So please answer all of these questions and post them on Seesaw. OK, once you have explored the website, we have a special project we would like you to do. OK, so what we would like you to do is please create a visitor's booklet for Richmond Park. So what we need you to do is get a piece, an A4 piece of paper like this and fold it in half. So all you have to do is put the corners together and then fold it along the edge like that to create your visitors booklet. OK. This booklet we would like you to bring into class on Monday on so on Tuesday, uh, the 9th of March, the second day after you come in from school. So you can decorate the border like this. You don't have to do bubbles. You can use any colors uh, that you want and you can just do straight lines or you don't have to do a border at all. Then you have to do the title page, which should be Richmond Park Visitors Booklet. Now think about what makes a visitor's booklet interesting to look at. You don't just want text. You want people are more attracted to things when they have some drawings. So I thought it'd be nice to draw a deer um, because that's what is special about Richmond Park. It's one of the few parks in this country that has deer, natural roaming deer in it. And then you can draw some trees and shrubbery and make it look nice and use different colors. Then once you've done your front page, I would like you to please write the title Richmond Park and then write a little bit about the history of Richmond Park. So this is information you will have to find from the Richmond Park website. So I've written here Richmond Park is the largest royal park covering 2,500 acres, and in 1628, Charles I brought his court to escape the plague in London and turn it into a deer park. Right, I would like you to write two more sections. You can choose any relevant sections that you would like. They can be about the wildlife, they can be about the flowers, they can be about the tree, the deer, the sports facilities, the Isabella Plantation, King Henry's Mound, the golf course, any information that you think would be relevant and interesting to a tourist visiting. OK, I here have chosen to write about deers. Again, try and include pictures and drawings where you can to make it more interesting, because if you just have blocks of text, it's not that interesting for a visitor. You don't have to choose deer, you can choose invertebrates, you can choose birds, you can choose bats, and make sure you include some information that you find from the website. So I've written here, Richmond Park has 630 red and fallow deer roaming freely since 1637. The deer have played a major part in the park's history. And then I've included a thing to say, please don't feed touch or photograph them at close range, because that's some information I got from when I was looking at the website. Now, I would also like you to include a bullet point list of things you can do, making a list with maybe a few words about what these things are. King Henry's Mound, it's a famous natural landmark. Isabella Plantation, hundreds of beautiful flower and plant species. There's a golf course, there's fishing, 
there's the Pembroke Lodge, the Roehampton Cafe. Then finally, again, I drew a little picture to make it a bit more interesting. I would like you to draw a map because it's really important for vi that visitors have a map so that they can find their way around Richmond Park. The first, now I'm drawing this map not from memory, I'm using the website. Throughout this whole booklet, you have to always refer back to the website. The first thing I did is I drew the outside, the outer perimeter of the park. I, then I started with the, the water feature. So this is a pond in the middle. These are some rivers. That's a smaller pond. And then I'm also labeling it as I go through. So labeling the gates because so visitors know how to enter. There's Richmond Gate. That's Sidmouth Wood. Um, and then I'm labeling the other things. That's the Penn Pond, Martin's Pond, the Sheen Gate, the Broomfield Hill, Kingston Gate. There's the beautiful Isabella Plantation. And then you can also include car parks so that the visitors know where to park. I've included the golf course and the different walking paths um, and the ham gate. So then I'm also going to include um, a warning sign saying do not cycle on grass because that is going to ruin the grass. All right, and then I'm going to put that in a little box so that visitors know not to cycle on the grass. And there is my visitors booklet. I'm really looking forward to seeing your visitors booklets and make sure that all of the information you include comes from the website. Really looking forward to seeing this year six. Hope you've enjoyed this lesson. Bye.